All right, so it's been a while. Um, kind of got frustrated and uh, just everything kept leading to needing something else. So I just kind of just left it alone for a while. Um, but I finally figured out good news. Figured out how to put the strut back in and the spring without using a spring compressor tool. Uh, it wasn't too sketchy and I got it. I'll show you it's bolted up in here and all good to go. All I got to connect is the tie rod and the sway bar and put some good cotter pins in there. Brake calipers on, put the wheel back on, easy peasy. Uh, but I didn't have, they have the uh, lock nut lugs, lock lug nuts, and I didn't have the key, so I had to go get a key, and then I had trouble getting the right key. <laughs> but anyways, so you can see here, we're not in. What I have to do is disconnect the lower control arm, uh, pull that out, um, the ball joint, the tie rod here, I got to take off. And luckily the sway bar is already off here. And then the brake caliper that way. Uh, I don't know why I have to take the brake caliper off, honestly. I might try and leave it on. Because uh, all I really need to do is just take that sucker off. Uh, and then I'll bolt up the hinge there. And then I put a jack here and jack it up uh, slowly. <sighs> so I'm going to go ahead and try that with this one and see where we get. Alright, so I got all the tools that I needed for the other side. Hopefully this will be enough. Alright, there we go. It's down there. Work with this tie rod here first. Yeah, I don't see why... I don't see why I'll need to take off the uh, brake caliper, so... I'm gonna leave that on and see what happens. Like to leave it on the top flush right there so you can pound this to help get it out. Some people say you want to pound here to break it loose uh, so that way you're not messing up the threads or anything. There, that worked. Get loose. Another thing I like to do is pull it out, put the nut on there. Right, those are off. I think I just used a crescent last time. So I'm going to try it. Use a hammer. Perfect. Should come off pretty easy. Usually these are not too tight because they have the cotter key that goes through, which keeps it from backing off. There we go. Let's bust it off. Didn't come all the way down. There we go. Issue is, I'm gonna take off this strut. It's not in the way. Hopefully, it doesn't fall on my hand. So now, I'm just going to install it the opposite way. Okay, so I found the two bolts. 
Uh, the smaller one goes towards the rear, and the big one is in the front. Uh, last time, I was able to put the smaller one in first, so I'm going to try that on this side. So I've been putting this off a while because I didn't want to have to go through all this work. I was making it to be a bigger job than it is. Um, I guess because I didn't know 100% what I needed to do. So I made it a big deal, but it's really not the biggest deal. So with these bolts, you don't want to put them on all the way tight. I'm gonna torque. I'm gonna tighten them down, not torque them, uh, just so they're snug. But if you tighten them too much, you won't get this play, and we need that play to jack it up with the spring. You'll see it in a second. And then once you do that, then you'll go back and tighten them, which I didn't tighten the other side yet. That's a good reminder for me. I did not have to take the brake caliper off. Excuse me. So. What you want to get ready for is this is you're going to want this lower ball joint to get right here in this hole. As soon as I get it to come in, then I want to put the nut. So I want to have the nut ready, which is right here. I'm going to set it right to the side for me. Move my other pieces out of the way because I need the uh, jack over here. And then uh, people tape this. I don't have the tape on me to do it. They just tape it here so it stays put. Um, then you can see in here the indention. This is the lowest part. So that's where I'm gonna put this piece. Just gonna hold this out. Once again, with two people, this becomes a hell of a lot easier. I'm gonna find tape, tape this on the top. Be right back. Just use an electrical tape here. Just kinda keep it seated while it gets put in and after that it doesn't matter too much, it'll stay in place. I'm gonna, I think what I'm gonna do is put it in here where it needs to go. Yeah, that seems better. And then bring this up slowly. But I need to make sure. There we go. It's kind of difficult to get it in position where it needs to go. I think that's pretty decent. So now bring your jack in. Try to get it in a good spot. Last time I wanted to move on me. The other side I did. There we go. Let the dangers begin. So I'm gonna hold it up, jack it up on this side. It's starting to go pretty decent. Getting real close. Let's turn this ball joint a little bit. Oh. There we go. That's pretty dang close. Oh yeah. There we go. And that's it. I'm gonna come in here. If you can see, put this uh, castellated bolt on here. Try to be relatively quick. So that way, when the if the jack slips or anything I won't be in trouble but yeah that's that's pretty much it everything else you just connect like you had it I'm going to lower it now slow there we go 
she's in. Not too bad. That's really what's been holding this for weeks. Haven't really been wanting to mess with it. Uh, get Take a break for a little bit. Work on other stuff around the house, all the good stuff, you know. Make sure the angle's good on this strut. This is, you know, kind of funny, right? Strut comes in through the middle, get it in there. And then you gotta find the hole on the top. Oh, I almost saw it. Oh, there it is. Perfect. So I'm gonna hold it at the top. Put the uh, bushing down and the washer, so-called washer, on top. Then all I gotta do is thread it a couple times. A couple times, we're good. That'll hold it up. I can let go. And then put these bolts through the bottom. That's it. Simple. Simple yet efficient. Can't wait to have this thing on the ground. I still gotta work on the trans mount. Probably have to cut and weld it. My buddy uh, Isaac, the one who helped me a little bit with this stuff, uh, he's going to see this and be happy to see it because we were just staring at it for like an hour like, all right, what should we disconnect and just trying to figure out what goes to what and uh, just for it to be, you know, as simple as that. I mean, it, it's simple. It, it seems simple, you know, but when you're looking at it with no direction, it's that's where you're like, oh, I'm not sure what I'm doing. But everything else, pretty good. These tie rods in and pretty fairly simple from there. You just figure out what goes in where. These boots are bad, you know. A lot of this stuff doesn't look the best. But for now, you know, we just want to get it running, get it on the road, and then we'll do nut and bolt checks, alignments, all that good stuff. Got the heavier engine in the front, so... Not too bad though, it was the six cylinder before. This is confusing too, like this whole setup is kind of ridiculous. I got all these bolts right. And I think, I'm just gonna look at the other side, but it goes in. Well, forgot to do the other side on camera. So it looks like it goes Bushing between, you know, bushing on either side of the metal, bushing on either side of the metal. I'll take this off and show you. Hope this helps someone with the uh, S10. This stuff's rusty too, so I definitely could have sprayed PB Blaster on it. So you take it down where it's bolt, uh, bushing, and then the bushing always faces the metal. So you got bushing and then another washer because I'm gonna have this spacer here, and that's metal, and then we're gonna do another washer for that piece, and then bushing here for the metal. Uh-oh, I don't think I was supposed to. Uh, to tighten the other side up, hopefully. I can get this, you know, because they're attached to each other. Oh, there we go. So nice. Uh, it looks like I'm missing a washer, but what I would do is we got bushing there, and then washer, then nut. So I don't want to uh, put it down yet till I find the washer because this nut's just going to dig in that bushing and destroy it. But that's pretty much that and then connect this like the other side and then there's holes I don't know if you can see there's holes in the the bolt and that's where the uh, cotter key goes. So you just come down until it's nice and tight. 
and then you'll see that hole will start to appear. And then you stick that cotter pin through it. I don't have any extra ones around me. It's pretty simple. I like to give it one extra turn, but if you go too much, then that cotter pin's not going to hold the. It's got to go in that you know groove. Like here's a broken one, but it just goes through there like that, all the way through. So then you won't be able to turn this because it'll hit that. But yeah, I'm gonna finish this up. All right. Uh, so got these suckers torqued on. I went ahead and tor finished torquing both the bolts on both sides. That way it's good to go. Uh, everything's good. Just need new cotter pins for everything. There's that one. That's an old one. I'm going to pull that out. It's just there to secure it right now. So just got to get new cotter pins for it. And then that's good to go. Uh, I'm not going to put the wheels on yet. Uh, I found some power steering issue. Uh, this thing here wants to rotate. So I'm just going to look at that real quick. Uh, see if I could swap lines because this line doesn't want to fit into that fitting. Uh, the high pressure is fine. I can get that to, to thread, hopefully. Um, I can get it to bend correctly how I need to without any kinks. I still need the two bolts that I need here for the power steering to actually bolt that to the frame because it's not completely bolted right now. There's just one, I believe, in it. Um, other than that, I have the transmission mount here. I might have to cut it off of this, cut that old one, this plate off, and then move it to the left a little, uh, I believe is what I remember. Um, but I'll take measurements on that if I have to. Hopefully not. Also, another thing is uh, right here, it's... I need to put a filler gauge on it, but I'm pretty sure it's just touching. Um, so I'm going to have a big gaping hole in my header after running it for a while. Vibration is going to wear it through. Also right here, it's hitting. So... I need to figure that out. This is supposed to be swap headers and should fit right. But that's the only thing I'm like, oh shoot, like do I need to adjust the mounts again? Because uh, if you come around to this side, I have, you know, about an inch of clearance here. Or I could take those headers off and beat this in a little. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've got very little room here but more than the other side you see the starter right there uh, I can move it over a quarter inch and that would be nice um, so that's something I'm definitely going to need to figure out uh, probably before I do the trans mount because position of engine affects where the transmission is mounted as well but getting there uh, I'll actually be able to put it on the ground and roll it around uh, when I want. Once I figure out that, this header issue, then we'll be trans, and then it'll be ready to put on the ground and start doing the wiring. So we're getting there uh, slowly but surely, just taking my time on it, but I would also like to get it done relatively quick so that way you know I could be driving around and do some paint and stuff and got to get the blower motor for that. So got to make a junkyard run for a couple parts, but nothing crazy. So uh, thanks for watching, and hopefully we'll be getting back on some progress on this.